Hello and welcome to the round 19 review. After a win, a win by the Blues, 13 goals, 12, 90 to the Greater Western City Giants, 8 goals, 6, 54 in a, a job done at Marvel Stadium. Just a job that needed to be done and a job that was done in the end. We win by, by six goals and we march forward as the year goes on and we really start to experience the final, I guess the final lap of the season. We've got four more games left after this. Um, today was today was a good performance. Today was a good day at the footy. Very rarely in my experience as a supporter, I mean, I'm always confident that we're going to win a game, um, but that's just because generally I'm more of an optimist and you know I like to think of the best case situation as opposed to the worst. But today, going to that game, I have never felt more confident in a win than what I did feel today. And that's not to take anything away from the Giants, but you know they're just going through a really tough time at the moment with the players that they had out, the rumors circulating that some of them are going to leave. They don't have a coach yet. They're in a situation that you know I know all too familiar. And you know I I, I just felt like you know that combined with where we where we're at, how we've improved, the team that we're at, we are and the response that was needed from last week all came together and I just had ultimate confidence. I really did think it was going to be a, a big margin today and I was kind of hoping for that. Probably for the first time this year, I was really starting to turn my mentality towards to, oh, okay, well, this could and probably should be a big win. But at the end of the day, a win is a win. Winning is not the only thing that matters, but it is certainly the most important to quote uh, Jose Mourinho. Um, the game started, well, I guess the first half really was a story of just wastefulness and we didn't seem to have the full focus that we've seen from the group when we've played at our best this year. Uh, it seemed like there was a bit of a, a management going on throughout the game. I guess, you know, Things were changed, players were brought in. McGovern coming back is an important one for our back line and starting to structure that up as to what it's going to look like when we're at our best. Um, Setterfield coming into the side, onto the wing. That was one of the more pleasing parts about the game, the wing position on both sides. We looked, and when we're at our best, we looked the way we sort of did today in the way we moved the ball. We really try and stretch the opposition by moving it left to right, waiting for something to open up and then taking that avenue. But we just didn't seem to have the spark and the focus in that first half as what we've seen this group when they do have it. And it's really evident when it's not there. And it definitely, in my eyes, wasn't there in that first half. And, you know, we allowed the Giants to, you know, be within a kick at half time. you know. And we seem to always get punished with the most severity when we turn the ball over. We seem to always get scored on and always get a goal kicked on us when we turn the ball over by foot. And there was a little bit of that, but at no point throughout that game did I feel like we were going to lose the game. There were a few testy moments and a few nervy moments, but I always felt like no matter what, we were always 10 minutes away from blowing the game apart. And essentially that's kind of what happened, probably more so in the fourth than anywhere else. We, we pushed and surged a little bit in the third, then they clawed it back. Definitely had my heart in my mouth when Walsh went down. There was a series of events in that third quarter which just started to smell like the disaster of the past and the unlucky situations that I've experienced. You know, go back all the way. I remember being there when Cruiser did his ACL. I remember when Murphy had that massive collision with Dangerfield. I remember Juddy doing his ACL. I remember these moments and they just etched in my memory of this losing experience and this difficult experience of being a supporter in, in this era of the football club's existence. But uh, Walsh goes down, my heart's in my mouth. I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. He's just hit his form. He's well and truly back after the, the you know, missing the early chunk of the year with the syndesmosis. It was the ankle as well. So I'm fearing for the worst. I think he tried to stand up and he fell back down again. And that's really when my heart just sank. And I thought, what's happening here but um in a really weird twist as he came back on and as he gets to the bench to come back on the field it was the energy spark that we needed you know the, the, the game needed a boost the game needed a spark it needed to come from somewhere and it seemingly came from when Walshy stepped foot back on the field um, so that was really pleasing the way he was able to run the game out 
really close call. And then I think moments later, as Walsh comes on, I think Weedering hurt himself. I think it was a corky. So again, you're starting to pile up these moments and you're thinking, gosh, not these players. I think Charlie came off with a sore wrist as well. But nonetheless, we were able to get through that. And I've spoken a bit about just needing a little bit of good luck at this point in the year. We haven't really had it. We've had some good luck in in various parts and aspects of this year. We've had some bad luck in other aspects of this year. You know, there's always a... I guess there's always a silver lining to everything and and it all happens for a reason and it creates opportunities for others and there's that whole next man up mentality. But at this pointy end of the season, as we get there and as we know that this group hasn't really experienced finals football and the pressure that that brings, I really do think we need that good luck just to get as many of our best 22 in the park. And every club will say it, um, but it, for me, with, with us, which is really all that matters, it's just really evident that we do need to turn that around. So that was pleasing. And then, you know, the fourth quarter, I think one thing that really rose to the occasion in the fourth quarter was just the forward pressure. I think our small struggled a little bit in that first half, uh, except for Honey. Honey was was pretty good today. And, you know, we got the job done. We win by six goals. We get our 12th win of the season and we etch closer to our first final in, you know, a decade or so since 2013 and... 2011 and it's exciting and it's special and you can't take these moments for granted when you now inch closer to the reality that we've all been screaming out for for how many years now you know how many years have we been waiting for the turnaround where we can go to the footy we can go to a final and we can compete in relevant games of football so yeah very pleasing very pleasing today Um, and then I think leading up to the end of the season we really have an exciting and challenging, and I think the challenge is the exciting part in the end of the season. We have four really serious games coming up. We've got an away game against Adelaide who are really testy over there and they can't be discounted. Then we've got the Lions at the Gabba, the D's at the G, and then Collingwood at the G. Speaking of, as the game ends, the Collingwood Essendon game is, is also coming towards an end and you sort of start barracking for Essendon and unfortunately uh, they choked. And they let the Pies win after the siren. And that would have been handy for us because Collingwood are now a game clear of us. They're in the top four. Uh, and there's a really serious race going on in this ladder. You know, you've got Geelong who are clearly on top. The D's, you would assume them and Melbourne are going to be right up there in that top three. And then you get this situation where you've got the Pies on 52 points. And then, you know, Fremantle on 50, the Swans and us on 48 and um, then you've got the doggies there. So as it stands right now, we're a couple of games clear of ninth spot. Um, so there's still some water to go under the bridge. And I think there are still elements of our game we've got to clean up. And I don't know if today was a really good indication as to whether we're going to be able to do it or not because it wasn't, again, no disrespect, but it just wasn't a massive blockbuster match against an opponent with real substance to the game. It was more of a we needed to go there and get the job done type of game the way I viewed it. But that's not going to be the case over the next few weeks. So, yeah, I think what I saw today was a, an ability to go back to the structure that we set using the first option, using the width of the ground. I liked the trust that we had with our wingers. You know, on the one hand, they worked really hard, both of them, both sides. I think Cottrell and, and, um, and Lockie O'Brien on one side and you know, Setterfield on the other side. I think they worked really hard. And I think on the other end, we trusted to, to use them. And it was it was pleasing to see because that is an element that's going to be able to really allow our midfield to blossom when we use the width of the ground. It, it's looked that way all year when we play well. We have a really even spread of contributors, and and um, I'm just pleased. You know, we get another piece of the puzzle today in McGovern, who is an important one. We get another piece of the puzzle hopefully next week in Mark Pittenet, who is also an important one, and then George Hewitt will come back whether it's next week or the week after, we're not sure at this point. But listen, all signs point towards a really exciting time for us as supporters to go to the footy and know that we're playing in the pointy end of the season to play against the best teams in the competition, the top four teams in the competition. We've got two more games remaining or maybe three if you count the Pies as a top four side now. And yeah, I'm excited. thought the player of the game was Adam Saad. He's phenomenal. He's had a phenomenal year. The mark that he took in the middle of the ground, I, I was sitting right on the wing, right in front of it where it happened. It was it was great. 
got the crowd going and yeah everyone got through unscathed i believe i think there'll be a few sore bodies but you know this is that point in the year this is not a point in the season that i'm used to talking about with vigor and excitement it's usually more about fuck can we just let the season end already because we know we're not going to make it so yeah there's a lot of gratitude coming in that regard and we'll see what happens what about you how did you see this game how did you experience it what were some of your key takeaways and and what were your highlights and and what were some of the things that um you know you saw today that you know we need to clean up on and i think the other key question is what is this best 22 going to look like what are these changes going to look like because right now we're playing three small forwards um right now we don't have caleb marchbank but it looks like he might feature at some point over the next few weeks so what do you do there with the structure let us know Let's chat about it in the comments and enjoy the win go the mighty blues